So once the recuperated asphalt, the wrap, has been taken back, it needs to be crushed. So once it's been crushed, it's piled up. This crushed material at the moment is still in different grain sizes, so it needs to be loaded into the screen, and the screen will then select the different grain sizes which will be used to be loaded into the blend and make fresh cold asphalt. So here we can see the screen, which is then selecting the grain size of the various components, the aggregates, which are going to be loaded back into the blend to produce cold asphalt. And that's what it looks like. So now the, the material has been crushed and screened in the various dimensions, as you can see here, the various piles. It's going to be loaded into the blend hoppers. Obviously, each hopper holds a different grain size. The same as you have for normal concrete. Cold asphalt is no different. The material is taken and loaded into the hopper so we can have a full machine and start production of some fresh, cold asphalt. Each of the hoppers on this plant holds 15 cubic meters of material up to the water line. So here we are on top of the plant, now standing on the grids of one of the hoppers. Here we have the material which we've just loaded, as you can see. So in a moment, once the production starts, you will actually see the material go down. So the vibrators on the side of the bins, each of these bins is treated with a non-stick Teflon-type material to make sure that the material flows smoothly onto the belt and then in towards the mixer. So here we have a better view inside one of the four aggregate bins. Uh, as you can see, the orange linings, these are non-stick linings, which help particularly with the various difficult materials which our plants are uh, used to mix. Uh, the angle of the hoppers is quite steep, but these non-stick panels further assist the material to flow down onto the single belt under the hopper and then onto the main belt, feeding the materials directly into the mixer. See the material flowing down, you can hear the vibrators. Obviously, the timing of the vibrators, both in length of vibrating time and interval between one vibration and the others, can all be programmed from the onboard computer. This is the onboard blend cement silo which is on way cells, exactly the same as the four aggregate hoppers. Uh, here we can see on this particular unit, the customer has two cement silos, the screws and the socks, which feed into two different places on the cement silo itself. The cement silo holds four cubic meters of cement. And at the bottom of the cement silo, we have the unloading screws. Each silo has two unloading screws, which discharge the cement into the mixer. So, still on top of the plant itself, looking down at the placing belt, the discharge belt, here we can see the finished material, that is the cold asphalt, once it's mixed, being loaded into the tipper track. As you know, the A240 has a variable speed, so realistically, in working conditions, the unloading speed can be anything from 20 to 70 cubic meters per hour. So here we are now down by the placing belt. The material's coming out of the mixer and directly onto the belt itself. The discharge belt has variable speed. Therefore, it can take away the materials at a different speed. And this is generally done according to the type of material that you're unloading. If it's very dry or very wet, you can change the speed of the belt. You can also change the angle of the belt. So the cold asphalt that the client has just produced, 
he uses two different aggregates from two hoppers, so that's two different grain sizes. Both are wrap, that's recuperated asphalt. Then he uses 1% of water and 2% of emulsion. That means 17 liters of water and 34 liters of bitumen emulsion. And this gives him, well, this is one of the recipes that he has for his cold asphalt mixes. The A240 blend plant comes in various sizes, various models, from a two hopper plant, a three hopper plant, and a four hopper plant. Here we have the largest of the blend A240 models, the A244 bin plant, also known as the A240 quater. So the A240, as we said before, this is the A244 bin, the known as the A240 Quater. So four hoppers, one, two, three, four. Each hopper holds 15 cubic meters of material up to the waterline. So this part of the A240 is exactly the same as all of the other A240s that we've seen previously and that Blend currently produces. So we have the mixer, the placing belt, the hoppers. Here we have the cat engine. This is a diesel engine machine. The control panel. Uh, this plant, like all the other plants, is a mobile plant and therefore it's raised and lowered by the onboard pistons that we can see. And this particular plant has higher support legs. These are half a meter long. This permits the client to clean under the plant and make sure that everything is free and basically keeping his site clean. This also gives the added advantage that the pl plant is slightly higher than a normal plant. Therefore, the placing belt itself can be placed at a slightly lower angle when unloading into a tipper or even a truck mixer and this gives you more freedom of movement as re regards to the belt speed and the unloading speed. Moving along the plant, now the blend A240 is normally 13.5 meters long and it weighs 21 tons. The A240.4, A240 Quater as we call it, has this extra unit, this extra separate unit, which can be an add-on. In this case, the customer took it at one single time, but it can also be added after. The beauty of this is it gives you the possibility to add two extra aggregates in a large quantity. So in the case of this particular plant, the main A240 body has two hoppers, each hopper holding 15 cubic meters. We also have a smaller A240, which is only two hoppers, which holds 10 cubic meters of material up to the waterline. This plant is more suited to larger production outputs and four different aggregates. So two hoppers here, and then two hoppers on the additional skid unit. Now this particular skid unit doesn't have the hydraulic lifting pistons as you can see on the main plant, but if required, it can have the hydraulic lifting pistons so that no crane is required to unload it and to place it on the job site. In this area, the machine obviously is the command center. So we have the main control panel, which controls cement levels and basically the main parts of the plant. This is the blend control panel, which obviously stores all the recipes, up to 100 different recipes, which can be selected at any one time to produce a different material from what you were producing previously. On this particular machine, this is a machine with a CAT diesel engine, as we said before, 110 kilowatts, and this is the CAT control panel. The CAT engine has its clinch circuit, and we adapt the CAT engine exactly as the manufacturer gives it to us. Here we are underneath the blend mixer, or more correctly, underneath the cement silo itself. As I said previously, the cement silo has two discharge points and two screws, which we can see here. So the two screws bring the cement into this discharge sock, which then unloads the cement directly into the mixer here. In the case of cold asphalt production, the bitumen emulsion is added at the end of the mixer, as we have found that this gives the best result regarding homogeneous mixing of the material. So this is the inlet here of the emulsion into the mixer. 